What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Arrow OS. Let me hop into the settings. So here inside Android version as you can see there is the Arrow OS logo up top and based on Android 11 of course if you tap over here as you can see we have this Android 11's kind of like logo over there. Let me go back and here the security patch is latest of November 5th 2020 and if you see the stock kernel this is the Azure Part Plus kernel and the build date is 22nd November 2020 and I would say talking about the updates of this ROM, I have been using the 18th November build of this ROM and what I'm noticing over here every day there is a new update for this ROM and this is the GApps included version which I have flashed not the like without GApps version and if you want to flash this ROM just click on the card over there you can follow that like procedure to flash this particular ROM. And here I would say the updates are the most amazing thing that it receives almost every day another update. And I have been updating it like through the manually update process. You can watch that manual update process video over there on the cards too. And by the way for the Redmi Note 7 Pro you do not need the fclip disabler actually. You can just flash it because there is the force decryption option in the recovery itself and that works. So watch the two videos linked on the card to like get the actual idea how to update and you can like update it that way and you can flash the ROM very easily without any issues. Now this is how the settings panel looks like and there is not a separate customization section but there are these buttons, gestures, everything over here which I'll show you later on. So let me just go into the system panel and here in the updater section as you can see there is the like system updater you can of course check for updates for, from here or you can actually update with this updater too so that is good it will show there is a new update over here whenever there is a new update and you can see there is the arrow is version shows 11.0 then gapps and shows violet because this is the redmi note 7 pro's code name of course you guys should know that and the gestures is not here because it's in the settings and the stock keyboard over here on this gapps version is google keyboard or gboard now talking about the launcher as you can see this is the stock launcher let me actually show you this says arrow os launcher so this is great that we have this stock launcher let me actually show you here we have the notification gestures then double tap gesture is there this is the like double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen so this works great then we have the show google app show search bar you can disable those if you don't like that for some reason there is the hide protected apps over here so you can actually lock particular apps with this launcher let me actually show you if i just go over here and let me just find an app so let me just lock this telegram app as you can see i just tapped on the lock icon over here so right now if i go home and right now if i try to open it as you can see it says protected app and i have to tap the fingerprint scanner to actually unlock it so right now let me just tap and as you can see it has opened so yes this works flawlessly and again talking about the stock launcher we have the double tap to sleep and while i'm at it let me actually show you the fingerprint scanner speed again let me just double tap to lock the device and i'm tapping the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it has unlocked very fast and accurate and reliable fingerprint scanner over here what i'm noticing even with my right hand index finger if i do this as you can see it unlocks every time without any issues the fingerprint scanner is very very fast and reliable over here let me actually show you as soon as i can flip it and as you can see it has unlocked so the fingerprint scanner speed i would say one of the fastest fingerprint scanner over here no issues with it now on the stock launcher to the left we have this google's discover page you can of course swipe down anywhere on the home screen to get to the notification or quick settings panel then you can swipe up for the app drawer and you can search for any app over here like let me search youtube as you can see there is a youtube and you can search like any app from here of course and then if you want to know about the widgets yes i have added a widget and as you can see they are working totally fine on the home screen now talking about the stock camera here is how it is that we have a old kind of google camera over here as the stock camera i do not like that thing but yeah i have been using it with a gcam which i have installed separately but yes this takes pretty basic pictures i would say and as you can see this is a normal like google camera the old one not the newer one so yeah pretty basic stock camera here but you can of course install separate google camera like the unix version which i have been using this is working totally fine as you can see there is a night set and stuff everything works great with this google camera you can also install the newer one but sometimes i have seen the newer one is not working or force closing so that is why i'm sticking with the unix version if you want this google camera again link on the card right there 
Now talking about some misc things like the LED RGB remote app I have tested with this app the IR blaster present over here on the IR blaster section I hope it shows over there. So yeah this IR blaster actually works fine without any issues with this LED RGB remote app. The DRM info shows as level 1 here if you are noticing. So you can like actually play Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. And as the safety net passes right out of the box you do not need magic for this. You can use banking apps on this ROM right out of the box, right after flashing it I mean. So you do not need to tweak anything to use banking apps. Now talking about the quick settings panel, this is how it looks like again and you can add multiple toggles over here. As you can see there is the pick notifications and stuff, then weather, then reboot option is also there. Then we have the focus mode and other stuff like that. As you can see there is the VPN and something like that and then of course we can add these. But I cannot find the FPS toggle over here. Maybe I cannot see it right now. I don't know. But the FPS toggle simply is missing. But there is the screen recorder with which you can record the devices like system audio and the microphone audio at the same time. As you can see, it says device audio and microphone audio. So with this, you can record both audio at the same time. So this is a really helpful feature. This like screen recording option and the audio, you can record both tracks. So that is good. And you can disable this peak notification. This is just the heads up which will be disabled if you like disable it. And nightlight and stuff of course is working which I'll show you later on. Right now let me just jump into the settings again to show you the other things. So first as you can see in the network settings we have the Wi-Fi calling option. So yes the Wi-Fi calling is actually there. And this is how the in-call UI looks like and as you can see there is no like call recording option but yes this is the basic pixel dialer so you can like put the phone into speaker and stuff then you can mute etc so yeah basic pixel dialer over here and volte calls are of course working we have the battery settings and here if you tap on this like top part you will see there is a full battery usage kind of showing option then we have the last full charge then the screen on time I would say talking about the battery life you can definitely get 7 to 8 hours of screen on time easily on this ROM without any issues and 18 watt fast charging of course is working and we have the battery manager thermal profile etc battery charging light this is the notification light you can also enable it in do not disturb mode then we have the battery percentage enabling option from here this is just the status bar battery percentage if I disable it as you can see the status bar battery percentage goes away and if I enable it as you can see it reappears. From the display settings we have the brightness level, dark theme etc and if you enable dark theme this like color bucket will appear let me actually show you by enabling it this is how the like dark theme looks like of course and you can change the like background color of the dark theme I have been using it with the raven black looks great and we have the styles and wallpapers over here so you can actually customize the theme from here and you have these many fonts then these icons are there and there is actually the like accent colors. You can change from here you can choose any kind of accent color whatever you like from here and you can create a theme and you can use that with that particular accent color then here is how the wallpaper section looks like we have this on device wallpaper and this is actually the default wallpaper over here looks pretty cool i would say then there is a grid option over here and the like lock screen clock and there are like multiple lock screen clocks you can choose from over here the colors are set to natural by default and you cannot really change it it shows blank over here then we have the lock screen customization and here the most interesting part is that we have the lock screen charging info and then we have the display media cover art then we have wake like screen for notifications then also we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen from here and also we have the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner this is the most interesting feature for me because i can just tap the fingerprint scanner right after reboot and it unlocks the device for me without me entering the pin so that is really helpful this always unlock with the fingerprint scanner is the like really great feature that we have over here in this like lock screen section in the display settings. Double tap to wake is actually working super fine no issues. Then font size display size you can customize that. We have the weather kind of customization over here. Then insert status bar items we have the headset bluetooth etc icons over here. Even vaulty icon is there but the vaulty icon is actually the HD icon over here. Now inside sound settings we have the media call volume etc options then we have the show volume panel on the left side if you want to see it on the left side as you can see right now and you can expand the volume panel just like this as you can see and you can control the like media notification etc volume from here and there is the do not disturb you can like customize it if you want to the, we have the media option then phone ringtone you can change it of course 
and we have the dial pad tones, screen locking sound, even screenshot sound, disabling option is there. But the sad part is that we cannot find the Mi Audio Dirac over here. Even without Mi Audio Dirac, I would say the sound quality is good enough. No issues with the sound quality with like the headphone jack or even speaker or even with a Bluetooth headset. Now inside security, we have the fingerprint option and there is no like face unlock or app lock over here, but you can use the like stock launchers app lock, of course. So that's how it is. Let me go back and here we have the buttons. And now we have some customizations over here. As you can see, we have the enable advanced restart. So that means on the power menu, this is how it looks like, by the way. And here, as you can see, there is the like light turning on and off feature. As you can see, this is like if your home has some smart lights, you can control it from here or you can add more stuff over here. And then if I tap reboot right now, as you can see, we have the directly rebooting option to system or recovery or like a hot reboot. I don't know what it does. But yes, there is also the fast boot rebooting option like this bootloader option. So yeah, you can directly reboot to fast boot or recovery as you'd like. Then we have some power menu action. We have screenshot, screen record, etc. You can enable whatever you want from here. Let me go back. We have the invert layout. This is if you are using two or three button navigation. Then we have playback control and volume wake and stuff. Let me go back inside gestures. We have the quickly open camera. This is the double tapping power button opens the camera. Then we have the system navigation gestures. And if I go into the settings, as you can see, I have the gesture pill bar length to the long. And right now, as you can see, right, the gesture pill bar is quite long. And you can actually customize the left edge, right edge, etc. Then two and three button navigation is of course there. Let me go back. We have the prevent ringing swipe to take screenshot. This actually works fine without any issues. And as you can see, you can share, edit or delete it from here. So I'll just delete it right now. And here we have the power menu. And inside over here, we have the device controls. Then you can disable it of course and we have sensitive content showing up option on the lock screen. Then double tap to sleep on the status bar is of course there. So that is pretty much it about this ROS ROM right now. I would say this is a very smooth ROM and even if I go into the recent panel as you can see there is a screenshot option and there is a clear all option over here. Not the select one this is saying clear all. So yes you can like clear all the recents from here. And right now, let me just open a couple of apps and show you guys the app of speeds and the RAM management over here. Let's open Facebook, Twitter, Play Store, YouTube. Now let's open Instagram. Now Google Home. Now let me open, did I open Play Store? Yes, I opened that. And now let's open this DRM in photo. What else should I open? Okay, so let me open this LED RGB remote app. Let's open Flipkart. Now let me just open all these apps from memory. And as you can see, all the apps, it looks like are in memory. Play Store. Okay, still in memory. YouTube still is in memory. Instagram still in memory. Google Home is in memory too. This LED RGB remote app still in memory. Right now let's open this DRM info and as you can see it is still in memory. So I would say the RAM management over here is great. No issues with the memory management or even app opening up speed and you can switch between apps from here just like this. And talking about the performance here are the benchmarks for this ROM. I think this is pretty much one of the best Android 11 ROMs right now for the Redmi Note 7 Pro simply because it has a like few customizations which are key important customizations but yes it does miss on some things like the like brightness control by sliding on the status bar those things are not here so yeah but it does receive update almost every day and i don't know right now this is 23rd november it did not receive the update yet but pretty sure it will be receiving the update later today so yeah i feel the updates are the most interesting things about this rom in my personal opinion so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kerry and tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye, -bye now